In this video, we will be making the clamp assembly here. You can see that that's the part that moves up and down that would hold the piece onto your table. Um, it has these two holes for the pins to go through with the roller and the pivot point, and then a smoothed out bottom end, rounded over end here so that you get good contact with the piece you're making. So we'll go up and we'll start our new part. Say OK. And you can see we have the drawings up here in the top right corner for that assembly. All right, and so we we'll want to start off. We'll go to our front plane and we'll start a new sketch. OK, and so in this sketch, let's look here. Let's start down here at the corner. We'll just start with our line. Let's do our reference lines. So we have them. All right. We'll start with our line tool. And we're just going to draw this out. So go up. You can see that there's chamfers on that. We're not going to draw in our chamfers just because it's a little easier just to use the chamfering tool. Okay, now this is a new thing for you. If you go away from the point and then come back to it, we can actually draw out a circle at that point in time. Let's just go up to this line, back over, and there we go. We've got our completed part. Now you'll notice that we have a radius of this inside curve. There's two ways that we could do this. We're actually going to be using our, um, our fillet tool for this. To, to get our drawing right. But for right now, let's start putting in some measurements. So our overall length is going to be 150. So I'm going to say smart dimensions from this face to this face. I'm going to make this 150. Now you could have pulled off of this line, but because there's going to be um, fillets on this, let's just do it face to face. That way we don't have to worry about any of the geometry changing here. We know that our radius here for this circle is going to be 15 and you can see now typically when we have a circle and we pull off we get a diameter uh, measurement in this case since it's just the half circle we get a radius measurement so we're going to say this is 15 and then we have our height is going to be 25 and so once again we'll go from this face to this face and we'll say this is 25 and that fully defines us here all right so let's Let's um, actually do our chamfering and our fillet before we uh, extend this out to a full piece. So we can go up and we can go to our fillet tool. Um, just right here. We'll do our fillet first. We can pick this corner here. And we want this to be a radius of 20 instead of 10. So we'll say 20. Say OK. And that gives us that nice transition curve that we can see up in the other one. And then we've got two chamfers here. So we have a, a 10 millimeter 45 here. So we'll do our drop down. We'll pick our chamfer tool. We'll pick this corner again. And uh, we're actually defaulting to that. And that's perfect. So we, we can see that it's a 45 degree angle and it's a 10 millimeter. So we'll say OK. All right, now, so now we're going to do the chamfers on the back corner here. So we can go, come up here. We'll pick our chamfering tool. We'll say we want it to be five millimeters. And we can come and we can click this corner. And we can click this corner. And then we can say OK. And we can see that those chamfers are now put in place there. Um, all right. And so then finally, let's go in and we can actually draw in our circles at this point in time if we want as well. Let's go and we'll do a reference line here for starters and we'll find our center point. Let's zoom in a little bit. We'll find our center point here and we can draw across. We'll say OK. Push escape. All right. And that gives us a reference so they'll be in line with each other. All right. And so we can go here and we draw our first hole and then we can go over here and we can draw our second hole. Go to Smart Dimensions. We'll make this one an 8 diameter. Uh, we'll make this one uh, a 6 diameter. 
All right, and then we can see that the distance from this edge to this point is going to be 12. And the distance from this point to this point is going to be 45, 45.5. And now you can see that those are both fully defined. So we say, okay. And at this point in time, we can do our extruded piece. So we select that, go to features, and we can say extrude boss base. And you can see in this case, it's extruding everything, even the spaces over the holes. So we can actually go in and we can click inside of those holes and those will exclude that from our extrusion. And then we'll do a, let's do a mid-plane extrusion. And we can look up at the top and we can see our full width is 54 millimeters. So we will make this 54, say okay. And there we go. So now we've got this piece right here up to this point, but we need to still cut out that notch in the middle where the um, roller will go. So if we go up to this face right here and we do a new sketch, and flip us over like this. And we can see here that we have got a um, place where we can do a cutout. All right, and so we see that that is centered on here because it's 12 from this edge and 12 from this edge. So we can actually just draw in a box. So we're gonna go here and we're gonna draw a box in here to this edge. And then we can go to our smart dimensions here and we can say we want this edge to be 34 and we want this distance from here to here to be 12 and we want the distance from here to here to be 12. And that makes us fully defined because these two are defined so that gives us our width there. All right, and then we can go to feature and we can say extruded cut and we can say through all. And there we go, we say okay. And there is our part three final completed. And then we can go in and change our color to green. Make you green. There we go, our whole piece is green now. Uh, let's go with a slightly paler green in this case. And say okay. And then we will save this as part number three for our final assembly.